Hello people of the internet, if you're watching this on YouTube, welcome to section 2 of Hien Kyo the Naraka Mandala. Uh, we are going to continue now with Hien Warrior, the name of section 2's title. If you are watching this on YouTube, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy. It is appreciated. Alright, I think the same setup should work just fine here. The exact same setup as from section 1 should work. Act 2, Hien Warrior. This one only had three arrows, I believe. I am the head of Raiko's four heavenly kings, guardians of the capital. I am the warrior of Genji entrusted with our most prized sword, the Hikikiri. Escorting special agent, Watanabe no Suna. Just like Kentoke! Indeed, I'm not paralleled, Slayer of Beasts. So then, that magnificent blade he carries must be one of the Onikiri Yats. Sutsana of the, from the Hoiki province. The question now is, is he a friend or foe? He may have slain the beast that was threatening our lives, but something inside me, something that is not a part of my circuitry, is screaming at me not to let my guard down. I cannot ignore this feeling and must be prepared to fight at a moment's notice to keep Master safe. Caster. Yes, Lord Suna? Media! Hello. You're right, Master. We're facing a servant, I'm certain of it. I see. Well, that is just a cruel twist of fate. Forgive me, foreign boy, despite having saved your life. I now have no choice but to take it in accordance with the rules of the Imperial Holy Grail War. For Lord Fujiwara no Michinigo's word is as absolute as the edicts from the heavens themselves. Fujiwara no Michinaga. Now, face me, Caster! Uh, Caster? Master, you're behind me. Now! Well, well. So you have chosen to get between me and my target. Your peculiar motions are surprisingly quick. This sword strokes are too far fast for me to follow. Oh, it's more they're frighteningly strong. I can feel my limbs groaning on the strain. Even as a servant, I'm no match for his mastery of the blade. So this is the head of Raikou's four heavenly kings. Okay, I like that she's getting more damage in other ways, too, now. But why would one of the four heavenly kings attack us... And why is this servant accompanying him? I don't know, but right now, with neither Lady Mash nor Lord Kodoro to help, it falls onto me to keep Master safe, no matter what. But yeah, um, Danzo's not caster. You have the caster, dude. If you are in a Holy Grail War, you should know better. You should know there's only one of each. Servant. Class. Duh. Oh, shit. Endurance battle. Okay. Whew. I was I was gonna say, oh shit, this is not gonna go well. Um, do a little something like this. And a little something like that. He's calling me caster? But do I look like a caster class servant? You know? I mean, maybe in the future, if we're summoned from the Throne of Heroes, we'll be a caster, but, you know. And I guess I am summoning the shadows of other heroic spirits to do my fighting for me, too. There is that point as well, I guess. I can, I'm starting to see why he might see me as a caster. Alright, Donzo. Generate us some stars here. This might be an endurance battle, but it's an endurance battle I'm just gonna win. Straight out. Totally, totally gonna win this outright. That's the power of guilt. Or not. There we go. Whew. I was worried there. Hey, so much for the endurance portion of this battle. I wonder how many turns you had to survive there. I really do. 
was a like five turns until Noble Phantasm or until you broke a bar? I kind of want to know. But I have no easy way to check. Another no battle node. Alright. Donzo! I'm alright. Hmm. Please be careful, Lord Tsuna. There's no telling what kind of tricks a servant may have up their sleeves. Thank you, Caster. That aside, I assumed you were a warrior from a far off land I know nothing about, and you are surprisingly weak. Or are you merely holding back so as to not kill or injure me? Ha! If that's the case, then you must take me for a fool. He's so strong! Even as a servant, I cannot see a way of defeating him! Despite being a flesh and blood human with a servant of his own at his command, he's still chosen to fight in this battle almost entirely of his own. You can't wait for next year? What's next year to be specific? Um, yeah, so, Donzo, I, I don't know how to tell you this, but a lot of, um, servants are actually weaker than their living counterparts. Since servants are oftentimes just shoved into one class container. Whereas their living counterparts have a broad spectrum, which is why when Gilgamesh is in his Gilgamesh class container, that's his strongest servant mode, I think. Is when Gilgamesh's class is Gilgamesh. Even though the heroic spirit accompanying him could easily block all manner of non-mystic physical attacks, he relies on her for nothing but support. So this is how he and warrior fights. We have no reason to fight you. But you do not seem to feel the same way. Don't be ridiculous. As masters, there is but one path open to us. As for Lord Fujiwara's decree, the city of Kyo is now the field upon which we must do battle. There is nothing more to say. His sword, he truly means to kill us. There does not seem to be anything I can say that should stop him, which means there is only one option left, though it may not be an easy one. I, yes, it does depend on the servant. Some are, like, exclusive to one class. I'm pretty sure, like, Anderson, Shakespeare, and those like are probably exclusively locked down to one class. But legendary figures like Artoria, um, Herc, Gilgamesh, Lancelot, probably most of the four Heavenly Kings, I imagine, also would be available in, would be stronger as living beings. Here I come. If we hope to see another day, we just have to run for it. Forgive me. Master. Let's go. Come on. There are some exceptions to Summer, by the way. Like, Summer Hokusai technically is a separate being from Baseline Hokusai. Technically speaking. Technically. Master, over here. This smoke may be poisonous. Hold on, I'm going to cast a spell that will neutralize it and let you breathe more easily. Don't bother. This is only an ordinary smoke screen, not a poisonous one. Lord Tsuna, stop! It's not safe! But it is canon! It was revealed to be canon in the imaginary scramble event! Plus, actually, Musashi does reference the Las Vegas summer event in the fifth Lost Belt as well, so... It is kind of canon. Don't you get it, Caster? That warrior is clearly trying to keep the boys safe. And she could not possibly do that if the gas were poisonous. Hmm, from the sound of it, they've already covered a great deal of ground. Shall I go after them? Of course, come, let's go. Oh snap, we got a mad sword master on our tail. We're now in the Shichi Nibo. Hien Warrior Part 3. This is form immediately before the battle begins. Let's rock. Excuse me. That was a burp. And a half. My apologies, Master, but this is an emergency. I hope you can forgive me for carrying you in my arms while we make our escape. <laughs> Ordinarily, I would do so by leaping great distances rather than running. But I'm afraid my body is still not functioning at optimum levels. I can run by myself, Donzo! Don't worry about me. A few scratches like this are not. I'm sorry, it seems my 
Long distance running and thousand leaps per second travel traversal mechanisms were more damaged than I realized. I suppose I should have expected no less from the famed Watanabe no Suna. Lean on me, Donzo. Let's just book it. Let's get some distance. We need to do evasive maneuvers. All right, Master. Thank you. Master, it won't be long before Lo Lord Watanabe no Suna catches up on us when he does. I want you to let me make amends for this horrific failure. I will do whatever it takes to delay him and give you an opportunity to escape, even if it should cost me my life. So I want you to hold on to my right hand. Its mechanism is being be silent for now, but it contains a communication device with greater range and fidelity than yours. If you use it to contact Caldea. Nope, not leaving ya. Master. I have all three of my command spells. Master. Hey, you. Hey, you two got a moment? Hmm? So, uh, I had a little too much to drink tonight, so I decided to go walk to get some night air. And the next thing I know, I woke up sprawled out in some back alley. So then I heard you two whispering, and the lady here sounded really worried about something. Maybe not on the verge of tears or anything, but whatever's on your mind, lady, it seems to be pretty serious. You in trouble or something? Yeah, maybe you are, maybe you're not. Not gonna lie, I can be pretty dense. So if you don't want to deal with that, then just let me know and I'll get out of your hair. But, if I ain't got it all mixed up, and you really do need help, all you gotta do is ask. Golden! A manly man! That is his description. A manly man! And he is a manly man, isn't he? One word and I'll hop up. I'll hop to and bail you out. Whatever it is that's bothering you, I'll take care of it. I sure ain't about to make injured villagers fend for themselves. So, how about it? You two on the run from monsters or bandits or something? Where's your house? Is it close by? Golden hair. Are you perhaps... Golden? Huh? What are you talking about? Golden. Golden. Nah, that ain't right. Wait, it is. Golden! That's it. I like the sound of that. Something about that word just sounds... Yeah. Awesome. Oh gosh. We're the ones that gave him the nick that gave him the golden ideology. It's the golden ideology paradox. So we were always destined to live to this moment so that we could make Sakata Kentoki the golden man he is destined to be. Golden! I love it. Wait, oh man, I didn't realize how badly injured you were. What happened to you guys? You run into Sujigumo or something? Well, close. A Sujigumo did attack them, but that is not what inflicted those wounds. I did. Just to graze with Higekiri. Suna. Curses he already caught up to us. Huh. <laughs> so that's how it is. Interesting. Kentoki. Move aside, you're in my way. My business here is with the woman and boy, not you. That right. Kentoki. I don't know if you noticed, Brother Suna, but it's the middle of the night. I know I couldn't live with myself, I didn't make sure these two got home safe, so that's just what I was about to do. Whatever business you got with them can wait. Got it? Lord Kentoki, he really does mean to protect us, even though we have yet to tell him a single thing about ourselves. He made his decision in an instant without any hesitation. So this is Lord Sakata Kentoki of Ashigara, one of Raiko's four heavenly kings. Stand down, Kentoki. I'll prefer to avoid anything that might cause Lady Raiko grief. Ha! Big talk even for the head of the four heavenly kings. Kentoki. You know, I got nothing but respect for you, Brother Suna. But that doesn't mean anything you, so you say goes. Now, why don't you fill me in? Because I don't get it. Granted, since I came down from Mount Tashigara, there's been a whole lot of things that were clear as mud to me. But no matter how hard I try, I can't understand why the undisputed strongest he and warriors would be going after women and children. I'M NOT A CHILD! I shouldn't even have to be telling you this, brother, Suna. But we're supposed to keep women and children safe, not cut off their heads. I see, you do make a good point. However, neither of them is young enough that I would call them children. Thank you. That's really what you think, Brother Suna. 
Because it sure don't look like that to me. Hell, that boy with the black hair is definitely still just a kid. No, I'm not! Most kids his age probably be bawling their eyes out if they were lost in the middle of the night. Good lord, how young do we look? But not this kid. He's been holding back his tears and refusing to give in to his fears as he looks away for, for a way home. He might be lost, but he's still got guts. At least, that's the feeling I get from him. How about it, you brother? You sure you don't feel the same? I'm glad to see nothing ever gets you down, Kentucky. But the Imperial Holy Grail War requires that I do this. Now stand aside. Hmm. No. I said stand back. And I said no. Oh, he's facing us from the front now. Oh man, if this is his ascension, that's going to be hilarious. Hold up, I, I need to look. Is his ascension just literally him turning to face us? Because if that's the case, that is hysterical. Oh. Uh, I need to search Watanabe. Watanabe. No sooner. It is! <laughs> oh, that's great! His ascension is pretty much just him turning from a... To face us! Oh, that's hilarious! <laughs> oh, that's good. He puts on a little hat, draws his sword, and turns to face us. That's great. You leave me no choice. Bring it on, you bastard. Oh, can't forget the hat. I like the idea of him going all serious, just taking a small fez-like hat out of his head, drawing his sword, and fully facing his opponent now. That's just a hysterical thought. Um, yeah, this party should go pretty nicely, I think. And we actually get to use a maxed out Kintoki as well. That's gonna be awesome. I reckon. Alright, what are we up against? He's got some Dragon Tooth Warriors on his side as well. Child of the Red Dragon for increased HP and stun chance rate. So he can stun on hits, perhaps? Um, I don't honestly remember what Kintoki, what base Kintoki does. It looks like it is literally just the same as Rider Kintoki, except it's a month, it's a single turn strength increase rather than quick. Good to know. Good to know. Um, and then we do a little something like this. A little something like that. A little bit of that. And a little bit of that. I kind of want to save Kintoki here. Oh, there's a hundred enemies. I didn't pay attention to that number until just now. Oh, he's got some heals. Okay. This is a very golden turn. A very golden turn indeed. Um... Is this the right move? Probably not. Yeah, that wasn't the right move. I should have just gone all in. On Suna here. Oh! Okay. Thank you for targeting Kentoki down, I guess. I totally wasn't planning on using him at all. Or anything. Suna. Jeez. He's a bit mean. Oh great, he's got evasion now. 
It's for the whole flippin' turn as well. And he is a single target, boyo. Uh, throw the evasion on Gil. He needs to live. As well as generate some stars, I guess. Who are you going to target? Castoria, hopefully, or Gil? Actually, I hope Gil. No, XA! Curse you for killing XA! Lambda is sadly not going to be doing much here. Uh, it's the whole turn for the damage cut, which sucks a little bit. Hopefully, Gil can power through it. Hopefully, I also only need to take out the first um, bar here, because if that's not the case, then this is going to be dangerously bad. Please, just need to take out the first bar. All severing. It's not all I need to do. Oh no. Ah, uh, this isn't good. This is not good at all. Gil is in danger here. Gil is in a lot of danger. Thirty thousand point heal now. Lovely stuff. And there goes Castoria. Okay. Yeah, this is not gonna be a very fun time. Especially if he keeps getting damage cut, might I add. The constant damage cuts is not cool, dude. I don't even have NP yet. Um, melt, get a little bit of damage to yourself, and go a little something like this. Oh god, that's a heavy damage cut, isn't it? And now he's full charge. Uh, Melt Virus tweaking him. Of course he guarded it. Of course he would freaking guard from Melt Virus. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. There goes Lambda. Lambda, give us some stars, or Mountain, give us some stars. It's a decent, okay, Gil turn. Yeah, this is not looking too good <laughs> already. I over I under I over I underestimated this fight. I definitely underestimated this guy. Oh, 
so Screw your turn of evasion! Sorry. That just very much annoyed me that he gets a full turn's evasion. Um, Gil is in some bad states here. If he goes down, then we are screwed. I will burn my seals if I need to, to do a full res. I really don't hope, I really hope I don't need to, though. I mean, I could probably, if I did this again, I could probably do it more effectively, I guess. Got the damage cut. There should at least be a gill heavy turn. No damage. God damn, this damage cut of his is stupid. Only crits seem to do anything. I think that's only because crits penetrate through those sorts of things. Yeah, this isn't looking too good. This is not looking good at all. I essentially need to survive this turn. If I survive, I might be fine. I might be fine here. Might is the key word. I might have lucked out. Holy cow, I may have lucked out of this fight. Oh, I got lucky as hell. My own golden held on to the end. That was stupidly close. Like, stupidly close. Never mind the Shikigami skeletons, Caster. They're only getting in my way. And they're dragon tooth warriors, but if, anyway, if I do that, don't bother. They won't be of any help against Kentoki. Ah! <laughs> well, that's something. Never would have thought a lone wolf like you'd send a bunch of skeletons to do his dirty work. Not that they're going to be much help against, huh? <laughs> that was close. Well, well, not so much as a scratch, even after taking a direct blow from Higakiri. I know you had talent. Ah! Damn. I can see why Lord Kentoki was one of Raikou's four heavy kings. Even up against a warrior as strong as Lord Tsuna, he refuses to back down. However, Lord Tsuna is still. Fun though it was to spar with you, Kentoki. I'm not about to spend all night needlessly fighting one of my fellow heavenly, four heavenly kings, especially since you are not a master yourself. Ha! Since there are two casters present here, I need only bring back one head as proof. Lord Tsuna's sights are not set on Lord Kentoki. And they're not currently set on me, either. So then he must be after Master. Oh, crap. Donzo Spirit Form! Understood. What? Hmm? Did she just disappear? No, it's not that. Her boy... The boy told her to use her Spirit Form, which must mean... Caster! Yes, Lord Zuna, she's definitely a servant. So you mean the puppet, rather than the boy. I see, so I've not been tricked so much as I've simply been simply ignorant. I'm sorry, I should have been more specific. You're right, the servant signal came from the woman with the long black hair who just vanished. Not that boy with the black hair. I see. Also, um, while we're on the subject, I don't think the woman is a caster. Given the way she carried herself, I would bet she's an assassin. What? 
You mean there are other kinds of servants beside casters? Hmm. Lord Suna. No, it's alright. I shouldn't have been so quick to jump to conclusions. I just assumed this boy here was a caster based on their highly unusual clothing, and the fact that I thought I saw him use some form of sorcery. It just goes to show that I too have much to learn. Kentoki. I don't get it. How the hell did that injured lady disappear like that? Oh, sorry brother. What's up? Since there do not seem to be any casters here whose head I can take, I will step aside for now. Go ahead and take that boy wherever you like. But know this. The next time we meet, I will have you show me your left hand. And if by chance I should happen to see those glowing red marks upon it. What? Yeah, what are you going to do, brother? Put, your, put you to the sword, of course. <laughs> so you're finally going to come at me without holding back anything, huh? Well, that'll be something. In that case, brother Suna, I can't wait to see what you've got. Let's go, Caster. Right. He is gone now, right? I can't see him anymore, at least. I can't sense him either. Huh, that's a relief. Man, that was nuts. Going up against Suna's crazy skills seemed he was holding back. But you guys did that and managed to make it out not with just your head still attached, but all your limbs, too. That's the sort of thing people would be talking about for ages if they'd seen it. You ought to be proud. I knew I could count on you in the Heian period, too, Kentucky. You are one of those morphing heroes! Morph. Ah, where'd you come from? Man, so you can just disappear and reappear out of nowhere, huh? What Lord Soul here is trying to say, Lord Sakata Kentoki, is that you are a good person who always tries to do the right thing. No, oh, someone who always choose tries to do the right thing, huh? Hmm. Me? You think? Because I don't got any idea what's right and what's wrong. Hell, if you do, I'd love if you told me. As far as I'm concerned, I was just helping out a kid who lost his way. I wasn't thinking about it any deeper than that. Man, city life's complicated, huh? Especially now with the Imperial Holy Grail War going on. Yeah, I'd like some more details about that, please. But looks like for you on YouTube, that'll have to wait until the next episode of this on YouTube. Because that is the end of section two, so I will pause a moment here so I know when to split. Or not. Oh, we got the wardrobe key. Nice. But I will pause for a moment here to split. As well as gotten a drink. And we will continue with part three now. So first off, let me welcome you if you're watching this on YouTube. I'm Solarak Dragon. Welcome to section three of the Naraka Mandela Hien Kyo Lost Belt 5.5 Singularity. We're going to go with the Imperial Holy Grail War Section 3 here. So if you do enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. It will be very much appreciated. But let us proceed with Act 3, Imperial Holy Grail War. Dun dun. Dun dun. Dun 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 dun. Dun 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 dun. I was close to the beat. Okay, getting a bit of a filter and looking at these sorts of things. A chance like this comes but once in a lifetime. This astounding ritual devised by the great Lord Abeno Simi is without peer in all of history. It's named the Imperial Holy Grail War. By your grace, O Fujiwara no Michinaga, Minister of the Left, with my own Onmyo techniques. At the insistence of Onmyo Bureau, this ritual can begin today. Seven caster heroic spirits will be summoned here from distant lands, where seven of our fair city's fiercest warriors shall be chosen as these caster's masters. All you have to do, Lord Fujiwara no Michinaga, is promise the servant and master pair to emerge victorious, to be showered with riches and granted any wish their hearts desire. And all seven teams will fight without restraint or hesitation. And that's not even the best part. <laughs> By sacrificing the caster's lives, the sea of Kyo's defenses will be strengthened a hundredfold, leading to a thousand years of peace and prosperity. Truly an astounding feat, truly a miraculous prospect. It is all is it it is all right here in Lord Sammy's letter, as I said before, O Minister of the Left, 
A chance like this comes but once in a lifetime. I see. And you said only lives the only lives that will be sacrificed will be these casters from foreign lands. Indeed. The idea of sacrificing the lives of the capital's guardians for a mere ritual would be the height of folly. But if only the lives of distant foreigners are at stake, there is no matter for concern at all. In that case, the Imperial Holy Grail War must begin at once. Consider this the word of the Emperor himself. Ha 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 ha! My Hien Kyo will be known for generations as the Thousand Year Capital. And that is what happened just a few days ago. It is said that Fujiwara no Michinaka appeared in a cruelly high spirits. Man, being willing to kill foreigners for a thousand years of protection? Holy Grail War, huh? That's what I heard. Wait, you know what a Holy Grail War is? I should have known. Why is that? Uh, I'm afraid I do not understand either, but at least Lord Kentoki seems convinced. Whoa, so your wound's all closed up already. That's amazing. I simply use my self-repair function. Of course, Master's healing spells were a great help as well. You're still not a hundred percent though, are you? Try to take it easy for a while, you hear? R right, thank you. Now, where was I? Oh yeah, the Imperial Holy Grail War. It's been about seven days or so since the Imperial Palace started this ritual thing in secret, and so far, two of the seven heroic spirits summoned here have been killed. Only that, their masters were the other two... Not only that, their masters were the other two members of the four heavenly kings. You mean Gatekeeper Usui Sandamitsu and Inspector Arabe no Su... Take. Damn, you really know your stuff, don't you? Yeah, but it was Brother Usui and Uncle Urabe. Anyway, not only did they lose their heroic spirits, they got pretty banged up themselves. The doc said they'll be fine, but they'll need to take some Arama Hot Spring therapy for a while. Anyway, the master who managed to kill those two heroic spirits was Brother Suna. Watabe no Suna. That's right. Suna's about as strong as they come. Even our boss, Lady Raiko, the current leader of the Genji said he was the single most powerful warrior in the entire human world. Of course, that hasn't stopped him from claiming the only opponents he's comfortable with are monsters and such. Most powerful human, huh? Things might be a little different when you start including non-humans, but even so, there's a, recon there's a reason Raikou said that. I mean, you saw him for yourselves, right? Yes. He was quite strong, yes. Very strong. The way things are going now, soon is a clear favorite to win the, Imperial the whole Imperial Holy Grail War. Master. Has to be the trap of Limbo. I agree, after all. Well, it could be this Imperial Holy Grail War. It's simply a variant of a traditional Holy Grail War. It is odd that there were no mention whatsoever of the Holy Grail in question. That is far too big an error to be merely an oversight. So the much more likely explanation is that this is Limbo's trap. Limbo? What's that? Oh yes, allow me to explain. Caster of Limbo, also known as the Alter Ego Limbo, is an irredeemably evil monk that... Now I gotcha. And you two are trying to nail this creep to the wall, huh? That's right. We suspect Limbo's true name is Ashaya Doman, the own Miyoji. You don't say. The details of Doman's death have never been made clear in human history. So it is entirely possible that he could still be alive in the 1008, the fifth year of Kanko. We do not yet know what connection, if any, Limbo may have to the living, breathing Doman. This Grail War itself would almost certainly be his work, no? Yeah, Abe no Sami, but he kind of went by both names. Yeah, that's right. Lord Sami is the guy who originally came up with this Imperial Holy, War Holy Grail War thing, but there's some room for doubt on that. Is there now? In our circles, it is generally believed that Lord Sami passed away in the second year of Kenko, but... Ha, <laughs> is that so? Yeah, Lord Sime might look young, but he's actually pretty old. There's been rumors for a long time that he's actually the second or even third to bear the name, so it wouldn't surprise me at all if it got passed down to future generations. But anyway, I think it was about a month ago when Lord Sime disappeared to who knows where. We only learned about this in the Imperial Holy Grail War from a letter he sent. <laughs> that, that does sound suspicious, right? R Boss Raikou tried to tell the Minister of the Left that we should be so quick to trust something we know nothing about. But that rat bastard, <clears throat> I mean his Imperial Magistrate, just laughed and said a few foreign class casters' lives were a small price to pay for a thousand years of peace. And that ain't all. The guy who's basically running the whole Omeo Bureau is in Lord Sami's absence. Is Lord Ashaya Doman. Hmm, that's... 
that's... Crazy suspicious. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, part of that's because of what you told me about this limo guy, but it's also because, well, Lord Dublin's always been something of a schemer. Though I guess you could say the same about the Minister of the Left and Lord Seme too. I see. Lots of schemers around here for sure. Anyway, well, far as I know, this city's a hotbed for all the worst kind of stuff. Conspiracies, assassinations, curses, you name it. Sure, we ain't never had anything as outright crazy as this Imperial Hood Grail War before, but I've heard stories about plenty of other kinds of spells, good and bad alike. Good people, evil people, they all die by the cartload here. Take just a few steps off the main roads and you're about guaranteed to run into monsters. Or Oni, or Tsujigomo. And then there's all the manners and bando rebels out in the Azuma province who don't give a flying thing about Kyo's authority. So yeah, let's just say as he and warriors have got our work cut out for us. Trust me, this city's way scarier than anything I saw on the mountain where I grew up. That might be what this all boys down to, really. The whole reason the Minister of the Left decided to pin all his hopes on this Imperial Holy Grail War to provide Kia with a thousand years of peace. It might be because there ain't no other chance at peace otherwise. A wish, huh? I guess one thing all, minister all the Masters taking part in this Imperial Holy Grail War have in common is that they all got some kind of wish they want granted. Lord Kentucky, why did you put down your axe? What are you doing with your glove? Your hand! Kentucky! Command spells! Oh yeah, that's what these glowing red marks are called, ain't they? Oh, we can't actually see them, though. Yep, as it turns out, I'm actually one of those Imperial Hood Grail War Masters myself. So you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking you might be just my servant, soul. What? Okay, Ken Kentoki, I I'm clearly already a master! I can't be a servant as well, Kentoki, dude. Like, uh, I know he was dense, but I didn't realize he was this dense. Oh, Kentoki, you sweet summer child, you. That did not sound pleasant. How very pleasant indeed to have one of one's plans go so swimmingly. Hmm, a ritual that could not possibly exist in any hypothetical version of human history. The Impossible Imperial Holy Grail War. Indeed, this represents the culmination of all the independent research I conducted as a disciple of the foreign god. So I do hope you enjoy this pseudo-parallel world I've created. Including all the many personal touches I've added to better suit my tastes. My dear Chaldeans. When all is said and done, the last left shall be mine. So please enjoy what I have in store for you. Right to the very end. So this is a parallel world then. So we might not necessarily have given Kentoki his golden ideology. This next node is an assassin node. We have Kentoki though. So we should be golden. And we'll bring along baseline melt as well as baseline jolter. Yeah, that should be fine. We need bond point growth for people anyways. <sighs> gotcha. Guess I had it all wrong then. I wish I knew what to say, honestly. <laughs> Don't worry about it, it's my fault for getting my own hopes up. I mean, it's still disappointing, but I'll get over it. Ah, so you're not a servant after all, huh? Instead, the servant's this lady, and she's more of a scout than a spellcaster. I don't get it. You do not? Oh, I, I suppose I just assumed you understood the situation, based on what Lord Suna said earlier. Oh, so that's why Suna let you guys go. I thought it was weird for him to give up on a target like that. Now I gotcha, it's all because you weren't the quarry he was looking for in the first place. That explains... a lot? Oh gosh, he is golden, but he is dumb dumb. Alright, hang on. If you don't have anything to do with the Imperial Holy Grail War, then what in the world are you? That's a longer explanation. 
Alright, the pruning theoretical phenomenon, lost spells, ray shifting, and singularities, huh? And basically, you guys are guests from way in the future. Like, tomorrow's tomorrow's tomorrow. Well, a long ways past that, really. Hmm. Hmm. Man, this stuff's hard to wrap your head around. To be fair, it is kind of complicated. You know, you try explaining the whole story of Fate Grand Order to somebody, and you're gonna get a lot of, like, what is going on? And what I don't understand, I'm sure. But that's okay, I believe you. And as far as I could tell, you guys ain't the lion type. Besides, it looks like I was still right about something. You are lost, aren't you? True. So you're looking for a way to get home, and you want to find your friends you got separated from, huh? Now we're talking. Don't worry, I'll have you back home in a flash. Well, I guess it might not be that easy, but the point is, don't worry. Whatever it takes to get you back to this Caldea place, I'll figure it out. I'll get you home safe and sound. You have my word. Of course, that goes for you too, servant lady. Thank you for your help. I'm deeply grateful for your kindness. Don't worry about it. Everyone needs help sometimes, right? Besides, it's not like I've got anywhere else to go either. Hmm? What do you mean? You are one of Raiko's four heavenly kings, are you not? And during this time period, Lady Mino Moto no Raiko was charged with the minister by the Minister of Left, Fujiwara no Michinaga, with the task of keeping the city of Kyo safe. So, as one of her prized retainers, surely you must have a house or two of your own. Or perhaps Lady Raiko has put you up in her own house. Well, uh, how can I put this? It's complicated. Yeah, I'm part of the Genji clan, and one of the four heavenly kings. But I've, uh, got my reasons for wanting to keep my distance from Raiko right now. Basically, I guess you could say, I kind of ran away. So you're homeless, too. You got it. Sorry about that. Wish I had a place you could stay. But the only places that you put you on my say so are the ones with the ties to the Genji clan. Which means Brother Suno could show up there at any time. So that obviously ain't gonna work. I've been staying out of his way for the right for the alright for the past few days, but now that he said he's gonna take a look at my hand the next time he sees me, well Yeah, he's afraid of his mom, it sounds like. Sounds like he's afraid of his mom. Which I wonder I wonder why that's the case. Is it because so we know this is before the Mount Oe expedition where they kill Shuten and Ibaraki. Is it because Kentoki doesn't want to go on the expedition because of his bond with Shuten? You know? I wonder. I wonder. It's my fault! Hey now, what are you apologizing for? You were in a bind, so I helped you. Nothing else to it. These command spell marks on my hand ain't got nothing to do with you. I owe you. I'll have to pay you back, Kentoki. So that's how it is, huh? I like it. All right, then you now officially owe me a favor. You know, I'm okay with that kind of hard-headedness. Hell, I even find it endearing. Good thing, too, since I'm pretty hard-headed myself. Ha-ha. <laughs> <laughs> hmm? An ox-strong carriage at this hour. Must be some court noble on their way back home from poetry reading or something. Come here, you two. Over this way so you don't get in their way. Right. Hmm? The ox cart just stopped in front of us. What is... Well, now, this is a surprise. Do you tell what are a tall, handsome man, a young boy in a strange clothing, and a beautiful black-haired woman doing out in the dead of... out here in the dead of night? Are you all perhaps looking for a place to stay? Oh, uh, thank you for your concern, Miss Noble. But you don't have to worry about us. We're part of the Genji clan. Keeping Kyo safe at night is our duty. I see the Genji clan, is it? Why so formal, Kaido Maru? Come on, get that stick out of your ass. Hmm? Sai! Wow, she's here. Why is she here? I don't think this is her time period. Come on, let your hair down. It's like we don't already know each other. So what's going on? If you need help, I, Nagiko, I mean, Kyoko, might just be able to provide it. Whoa, Sai Shonaka. 
I mean, Kyoko, it's you! <laughs> Long time no see, Blondie. So what are you doing out here all this at this time of night? Anyway, you looking for someone to keep your bed warm or something? Okay, I actually need to look up. When was she alive? So, Sai Shonagan. Uh, Sai Shonagan. 966? Okay. So, she would be alive around this time, and in her... I... I don't like saying it, but she would probably be, like, in her late 30s, early 40s. So, yeah, okay, okay. Interesting. So she would be around here. Hmm. Around the middle of the Heian period. Okay. Interesting. Very interesting. That she would be here. And she might actually know Kentoki now that I think about it. Hmm. I guess it has been a while, hasn't it? Uh, what was that about my bed? Is that more of your mainland poetry? I don't get it. <laughs> don't worry about it. I was just saying the first thing that came to mind. Yeah, I know. She works in the Imperial Court. But, like, I didn't realize she was actually alive at the same time as Kentoki and all them. Hmm. Hey, now, cut that out. Hasn't everyone taught you to read stare? <laughs> Sai Shonagan. Hmm. Oh. Well, no, I haven't heard that name in a long time. Did you read a copy of some of my work or something? Bit of a bookworm, too. Read anything good lately? I found something recently that is so... Wait, hang on. Have we met before? Maybe way back when I was still in the palace? Nah, that can't be it. You have still been a little kid back then. Don't go down that line of thought. Whoa there, soul. There's two things you should never discuss with Shai Shona. Kyoko. Her age and her name. She's put out a lot of work into making herself look young. You see, her real age is... <laughs> Sigh. Ow! Lord Kentucky, Lord Kentucky. Could you please tell us how you came to know this lady? Huh? Oh, um, let me see. Well, I can't say exactly which family she's from, but Kyoku here is a genuine noble. I know you two might not have any business with the palace right now, but if you're going to be staying around the city, it won't hurt to take this chance to introduce yourselves. As for me, well, back when I was a kid who just couldn't get used to life in the big city, <laughs> let's just say she helped me out of a few jams. Yep, that about sums it up. I know I might not look it, like it, but I actually love helping people out. I believe it. I believe it. I see. According to the stories told in Edo period, Lord Kentucky was born several years before Lady Sai Shonagan. Uh, that does look to be the case, yeah. Based on what I'm seeing. But in reality, it seems Lady Sai Shonagan was actually the older of the two. Of course, this would hardly be the first time a heroic spirit did not exactly line up with their real-life counterpart. I mean, in my case, I'm a puppet, so... <laughs> anyway, what's going on tonight? Oh, does it have anything to do with Lord Michinaga's latest scheme? <laughs> As if that narrowed it down, considering how many schemes he's always got going on. Nah, I just ran away from home and I'm still running. I see. Did something happen back at the main Genji house? Or maybe Lord Mitsunaka demanded Lady Raiko give up her leadership position? If it's going down how I think it is, the Lord Mitsunaka is going to be a, it's being a real piece of work. My bet is he wants Lady Raiko to give up lady, leadership while keeping her in charge of fighting and stuff so he can declare one of the other kids' leaders and force her to form a branch clan entirely. What's the main house got to do with me running away? Nah, this is just my own little screw-up. I guess I could have left the city altogether, but there's reasons I need to stick around. So I was just trying to think of a place where we could take shelter for the night. Mm-hmm, I see, I see. So you need a place that'd be brave enough to take in three strange visitors in the middle of the night, huh? Lucky for you, and I just I know just the place. Whoa, you do? I sure do. I'd invite you guys to stay at my place, but three new guests all at once would be a little much for a semi-retired woman like me. Now come on, follow me. Let's get moving again, driver. Yes, ma'am. You get in the carriage with Kyoki, Danzo. Kyoko, Danzo, don't want you tripping in the dark and making your injuries worse. 
Thank you, but I will stay by Master's side. Ride in the carriage, Donzo. It's okay. But what about... It's okay. Get rest. Understood. Thank you. Well, looks like you and me are walking then, Soul. It is the gentlemanly thing to do. Man, this sure was a heck of a coincidence, running to you guys like this out here. Oh, it's Kyok. It's her. Luckily, I did too. These days, not even the main roads are completely safe. Sure, can't hurt to have a warrior of Genji around just in case. Welcome, Crimson Knight. Welcome to the chat. I am. hope you enjoy Fate Great Orc, because that's what's going on. Welcome to the stream. How are you doing? And stick around and enjoy as I try my best to make voices for characters. And thank you very much for the follow. Thank you very much kindly for the follow. I see. Speaking of Sai Shonagana and the Genji, I believe her brother, Lord Kyohara no Mu Nenobu, eventually loses his life to someone from the Genji family. Yep, this is the fifth, the 5.5 Lost Belt. Still the beginning sections of it, but it's kind of difficult, I will admit. It is kind of difficult with these boss fights, so I'm looking forward to the later ones. Ah, you're on the third. Well, this does have spoilers for... I think we've kind of gotten over some of the spoilers, but there is still some spoilers for later on, as well as for Shimosa, if you've not yet done it. The main roads are usually pretty safe, but things have been pretty weird even on them the last few days. Hmm. Last few days? Huh? Whoa there. Looks like Kyoko was still in the truth, soul. Something dead ahead. I see him. Don't worry, Donzo. You stay put. Me and Soul can handle them ourselves. Alright, let's do this. Yeah, there is gonna be something dead ahead. If I think this is... I mean, it was more the Suna fight. I was expecting it to end after the first break bar, so when it didn't... Yeah, I wasn't ready for that. But, um... Welcome, Crimson Knight. Since you do play Fate, I have to ask, who is your favorite servant? Out of all the servants in the servants, whom amongst them is your favorite? Salter, huh? A fair choice, a fair choice. What's up, J6? What is up? She was your first pen dragon. The thing attached the enemy. But Salter is a very solid servant choice. Thing attached the enemy. Oh, okay. I honestly speaking, I it didn't register. I registered it on the dark priest when I first thought when I first thought, thought it, but I thought that was just its eye. But now, now that I'm looking at the ghost things, I can see it there. Okay, that's that's interesting, huh? Uh, she was your first prag pen dragon. You tried to get the OG Seba. Artoria, good on you. You said the name properly. Artoria, not Altria. We will convince Nasu to change his mind. Someday. Maybe. Um, go like... I think I can hold off on running Melts NP just yet. Yeah, we can wait on Melt until Kentoki goes, so that he can, or she can use Melt Virus. Looks pretty cool. I gotta admit, Kentoki looks pretty- I so prefer this outfit for Kentoki compared to his base outfit. His base outfit just looks so silly. I'm gonna not lie. It just looks ridiculous, his face. It's also for all which would be Lalter, Ralter, and Sol Ralter. Ralter? I. Ralter. Oh, Malter! Okay, okay. So. I call her Malter because it's Maid Alter. You call her Ralter because she's Rider Alter. Okay. I, I'm 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 understanding you now. I I was I was honestly confused there for a fair bit until you clarified. Okay. I 
I've honestly not heard her. That kind of sounds like Mash Alter. Mash Alter would be interesting. <laughs> you know, Mash Alter would be interesting because Mashu is my favorite servant, you know. Hands down, Mashu is number one, Melt is number two. But yeah, Malt. I could see why you would think that with Mashu. Mashu, Alter, Malter. I could see that. But yeah. I mean, it's just most of the people I see with uh, Ryder Alter call her Malter, so. I have to admit, Malter, or Ralter is a new one. Ralter is a new one for me. Interesting, me interesting. You learn something new every day, don't you? Uh, excuse me. Yeah, I will admit. Oh, I know there's some fan works, but um, Salter is a pretty solid one. If anyone kills Mash, your team would go apeshit, annihilate, and destroy. I mean, if anybody killed Mash, I would go apeshit, annihilate, destroy, resurrection, destroy, torture, resurrection, destroy, torture. It, it just would not be a very pleasant experience for them. It really wouldn't. I mean, I burned the servants that have flirted with Mashu. And if I get the chance to fight Beryl or his servant, it is going to be an agonizingly slow and painful. I will freaking bring out a burn or a poison or a curse or an all three team and cost him pain. I will bring out the burns, I will bring out the curses, I will bring out the poison. I will whittle him down so slowly. To make him suffer for any agonizing thing that he was about to do to Mashu that caused Romani to intervene. That's kind of hard, J6. That, that's kind of hard. Oh. That. That heart-wrenching but most beautiful scene. That was a beautiful scene, but so heart-wrenching. Oh. I I was honestly devastated. I legit cried when, she, when that happened. I legitimately cried when that happened. I J6, were you there when, I, when that happened? And you can vouch that I did tear up? Or I started crying when that happened? Because, yeah, that, that was heartbreaking, man. Like, that whole journey she was with you, and then... <sighs> but yeah, Mashu is definitely my favorite servant, for sure. Salter is a pretty solid servant, though, as well. I will not lie. Um, I think... You weren't there? Okay. I, want... I don't think... Salter might have been... Well, Santa Salter might have been my first... Sa no, first Saba face would be Lily, since I was a day one -er. I was a day one -er for so Santa Lily, what or no? So um, Saber Lily was the first one that I got. Um, I think that it might have been Santa's Salter was the next Saber face I got though. I feel like that's the case. <laughs> Trying to draw upon the. Old, old memory banks here. Oh, I can understand that. I can understand, which is why, if there's ever a chance to take him on again, I'm totally gonna do what I've done with Mash thus far, and she's gonna solo a beast again. So I think it's only him and Tiamat that I have not done a solo with Mash for so far. Yeah, it was just it's just him and Tiamat. So the first two beasts before I got the idea are the only ones that I have not soloed with Mashu. And let me just say, those solos can take a long, long time to do. <laughs> but as the game goes, they get faster. They get faster. She did indeed. And it was a glorious scene. Glorious and heart-wrenching, and it was so heart-wrenching even when animated still. It was even more heart-wrenching seeing it all animated too. In the special. <sighs> Memories. 
sad memories, but memories all the same. Hey, Mordrick, welcome, welcome, welcome to the stream. How be things? How be things? We're just talking about Mashu and her sacrifice and my love for her. We're not done yet. There, that's the last of them. Good job, Golden. Thanks, you too. Excuse me, anyone hurt? No? Great. These kinds of battles don't bother me at all, but... Something else bothering you here, Kentucky? Well, it's just... I'm a little unsure about what to do. Fair, I guess. Okay, we're here. What is this place? Ever heard of the Tale of Genji? That's all the rage in Kyo right now. Right, well, it's author Murasaki Shikibu lives here. Oh gosh, we're just... <clears throat> okay, Murasaki's here as well. She is from this time too, isn't she? Because she and Sai know each other. Is Lady Murasaki a friend of yours, Lady Kyoko? No, I've never met her. You haven't? But I bet anything she's like the graceful wo noble woman's noble woman. So I'm sure she's the type of girl you'd never have been in anybody in trouble. Come on, she's gotta be too old to be called a girl by now, right? Kentoki! Man. Don't make those kinds of comments. Say. Ow! Anyway, point is, we've arrived at Murasaki Shikibu's house. She's a lady and waiting for Empress Soshi. Show. Show. She. So when she's not writing stories, she works at the palace. Yeah, asking someone in the middle of the night. Yeah, he did call us the child. Hmm, in that case, just tell her that Kusa no Yori sends her regards. I'm pretty sure. No, I'm positive she'll know what that means. <laughs> hmm. Alright, my house is over there, so this is where we part. See you guys some other time. Bye, Kyoko. Thanks for the help. W wait. We just ran into some monsters not too long ago. Is it not dangerous to travel along the main road at night with only a bare minimum of attendance? Not necessarily. Noble carriages like that always have several Shigigami with them. They might not be able to handle a Tsuchigomo, but they've kept up out by the bounded field of the Onmyo Bureau set up around the main roads anyway. What? For for Mashu? <laughs> You're right. <clears throat> I, I, I definitely feel like I would be. Definitely feel like I would be. For Mashu. And Melt, probably. And Jolter. And Aresh. And XA. They're all the main ones, but Mashu's been the only one that's really been threatened that I've had to, you know, potentially bring that out. Ex I, no, mel melt a little bit as well, melt a little bit as well. Um, she who shall not be named shall forever suffer under me. She who shall never be named unless it is to ridicule shall always suffer by my hand. I will never complete the main CCC interlude since, um... I, as long as I quit out in time, the torture will never end. The torture will never end. <laughs> <coughs> but the Kirijushiki Gami can handle any smaller pro monsters that come around no problem. He and security is thorough. Personally, I just as soon as not have to depend on any Onmyoju for help. But times being what they are, I can't afford to be picky. Shikigami, then why did you a master defeat those monsters we encountered earlier? Oh, that? Well, I was sort of just giving Kyoko a show to thank her for her help. And I totally enjoyed it, but that doesn't mean you should take too many risks out there, okay? Because if there's one thing I hate, it's people dying young from a little mischief that got out of hand. Alright, I'm going now. Good night! 
Um, you would be... You think I would be more of an extreme siscon, Tamashu? Hmm. Yeah, I think Salter definitely has some Yandere energy as well. I definitely feel like Salter would have Yandere energy to protect. But um, why Why do you think I would be more of a sis, an extreme siscon, Tamashu, Mordred? Okay, let's go ask this Lady Murasaki here to put us up. Oh, this section's still going. I'm sorry. Um, I I do beg your pardon, but I'm afraid I just don't understand what this is all about. For starters, who in the world is this Kyoko person you mentioned? I recognize you as Lord Sakata Kintoki of the Genji family, of course. I've seen you around Lord Michinaga's mansion a number of times. That's me. And here I thought we were just meeting each other for the first time. Sorry for not recognizing you from the Minister of the Left Palace. Oh, oh no, that's quite alright. I mean... What is it that brings you to my house at this hour of the night, Lord Kentoki? Did, did, um, did I make a terrible mistake at the palace or something? Yeah. Mur Murasaki's a bit of a nervous Nelly, so... I agree, Lord Sol. Do forgive us for intruding so late. I mean, I it would be very hard to piss Salter off. I think essentially just um, eating her junk food would probably be a very good way to piss her off. But if you can replace it, you might be fine. Might is the key word here. Suck her so much as really Andre does, and don't force yourself on her as much, but you would be way too overprotective and go crazy from very little things. Don't worry, Lady Murasaki. You didn't do anything wrong. I am my only use that name when I'm writing, so please just call me Koroku. How are you pronounce that? I don't know. Okay, got it. Anyway, don't worry. I know Brother Suna likes to play at being an officer, but that ain't my thing. We ain't here to bring you in for any wrongdoing at all. Actually, we kinda need your help. Huh? Come to think of it, Lord Watanabe no sooner did appear to be dressed like a police officer. And yet, as far as my records show, there is no mention of him ever serving as such. You know how... Uh, I would not want to piss Salter off, yeah. Salter has some moods, after all. Salter does have some moods. Also, don't act like Gilgamesh around her. I feel like acting like Gil would definitely piss her off. Oh, really? So that's how things are in the future. You don't have exact records of anything and everything, huh? See, Suna's not exactly a typical proper officer. When he was first ordered to protect the city, he said it was only right for him to learn how to be an officer, too. We went to the Bureau on his own and asked them to make him one. He is nothing if not responsible. That's for sure. Huh? Records? Lord Suna? Um, Kauruko. Yes. Kusa no Iori said to give you her regards. Kusa no Iori? <gasps> I actually don't know what Salter's relationship with Mordred is. I honestly don't remember that much. Kusa no Iori? Th th then that must mean... Ah, I see Lady Sai Shonagun sent that message. Did she... Even though I've never met her in the palace, or even so much as spoken to her, I see. Well, very well, I suppose it would be rude of me to turn away guests on such a cold night. Alright, I'll have a room made up for you. Well, two rooms, since you have a woman accompanying. Oh no, that's quite alright. Please, pay me no mind. It is my duty to keep my master safe, first and foremost, after all. So I would ask that you let us all share a room, if that is alright. You'd be fine with that, right, Kintoki? Huh? Uh, yeah, I guess so. That probably for the best, given the circumstances. I see very well. I'll convey your wishes to the servants. Are you truly certain about this? We are. Please pay it no mind. I see very well, then. You've, um, very open-minded, aren't you? And free-spirited, judging from your manner of dress. 
Um, oh, Donzo. You know, I think Kintokia is too dense to really realize what she's implying here. I wonder if Donzo does. Crowning Mortrit? I mean, I really don't think that would really piss Seba off. Artoria off. I really don't. They have a very complicated relationship, really. It really is more complicated than that, I feel. <sighs> it's finally t it's good to finally take a load off. I'll have to make this up to Kyoko somehow. And to Lady Kaoroku as well, of course. Master, Lord Sol, we have been fighting a great deal from the moment we reshifted here, so please, get some rest. I'll focus on doing the same. Yeah, no more pushing yourself until you recover, Donzo. You are too kind, Master. Rest assured, I'll be back to peak condition by tomorrow morning. And most importantly, I can finally begin following our original itinerary. Whoa, the servants even laid out a sh out Shitone for us. That's real considerate of them. Shitone. What is Shitone? I mean, rebellions are Mo's thing. Rebellions are Mo's thing. Um, okay, so they're Shitone are cushions stuffed with floss silk. That sounds incredibly soft. Like, holy cow, that sounds soft. And yeah, Raika would definitely be pissed if we got hurt in battle. For sure, for sure. She would kill the thing, dote on us, and then she may very well um, do herself in for allowing us to get hurt. You never know with those berserkers, after all. Shaitone, that's a kind of mat used for sleeping, correct? And they gave us hot water, too. <laughs> this is a real nice change of place after spending this, after several days spent camping out. Plus, if I'd stayed out there, I'd pro it'd probably be just a matter of time until Riker found me and gave me a good scolding. I can almost see her telling me, you're no longer on the mountain when you grew up, Kentucky. <laughs> Makes me nervous just thinking about it. Um, I was kind of hoping to get Raiko's help, too. Uh, yeah, Raiko is a Yandere mom. Remember, her madness enhancement does not let her easily differentiate between paternal love and romantic love. So... Those are very well tied together. Get Raiko to help us, huh? True, Raiko would definitely be willing to believe all the crazy stuff you've told me. She's a lot more open-minded than most warriors, that's for sure. But, uh, now's not a good time. See, Boss Raiko hasn't really been herself lately. She's been holing up in her house ever since the Imperial Holy Grail were started. And she didn't even come out when she heard that both brother Usui and Uncle Arabe had been injured. I don't know if she's just broken up about the idea of her fellow Genji fight among themselves, or... Or if she's one of the masters, too. Senpai! Yes! Mashu lived! She's not hurt! But she's also not with us. Aw. I need my Mashu, though, to cuddle. Master. You need to avoid all FGO streams for a while. Why is that, Mordred? Out of curiosity, unless... Is it because you don't want to be spoiled? Foo! Foo! Ah! What, what the? Are those ghosts? No, wait. That ain't it. Aha! I think I've seen this kind of thing somewhere before. This is some kind of sorcery or an Moyo spell of yours. You mean someone developed a method of video transmission, even in the Hien period? Uh, but never mind that now. Ah, because of Raiko. Fair. Fair. You do not like Raiko. You do not like Raiko. I mean, it sounds like this might be the living version of Raiko, which, theoretically speaking, should not be the super madness-enhanced mom figure, and might be the actual proper warrior leader of a clan that is merciless and... That just sounds terrifying. <clears throat> the other half is... Her other half is in control. Uh-oh. Master, in accordance with our original plan, I've activated my full functionality. And I have just succeeded at establishing contact with Novum Caldea. Way to go, Donzo. Whose other half is in control? Hmm. 
I wonder. You are too kind, Master. Nobum Keldea. So this be... Ah! Okay. Uze goes and I remember now. That is a good point. I forgot that she had that side. I did forget about that. That is a possibility of being the um, thing in control right now. So this must be that place way off beyond tomorrow's tomorrow. Damn, this is really something. Good, the video connection is holding steady too. I can see you, Danzo, and... Oh, was that? That's the Kata Kintoki of Hien Kyo. Thank goodness you're both okay. I see you've already managed to your help from one of the locals. You weren't able to reach if you're then? True, that side does not really come up outside of that event. You would destroy Uze. Do you like Raiko, Crimson? Are you a Raiko, Stan? I'm afraid so. That's correct, Master. Did something interfere with the ray shift? We believe so, and Lady Sion's calculations say that most likely the explanation is well. Both Lady Mash and I were unable to ray shift there, and instead we were left here at Novum Caldea. We tried to ray shift again, of course, but it failed. But it failed in the same way. It appears to be an advanced jamming method that bypasses every anti-interference safeguard we have in place. We're looking into a way around it, but we still have yet to come up with anything. I mean, I'm fine with Raiko. I'm just... She's neutral to me, honestly speaking. She has funny moments. I do wish we could get a more serious side. And she does have annoying moments. So I would say that she is a flat neutral for me. <laughs> I'm sorry, Master. Darn you, Limbo! I was never good at Limbo. I'm glad to see you're safe, but the situation isn't great. The reason you and Kato Danzo were the only two to reach if they're successfully is that whoever was interfering with it considers you two special cases. In other words, you're basically welcome guests. I see, so nobody else beside us is welcome here. But who could be the one inviting us? Yeah. Fair. Fair. Raiko to... Mordred Raiko is to what she shall not be named is to me. Indeed, indeed. I'm sorry, that was foolish of me. This has Limbo written all over it. Yes, I agree. This is almost certainly the case. Hmm. Hmm. Sorry to butt in, but there's a lot of things I'm not getting here. And one thing I want to make sure of. So the companions you guys thought you came here with are back at this Caldea place, yeah? Isn't that right? Mm-hmm. I definitely see Emi as more of a big brother figure. I definitely see Emi as more of a big brother, especially after the most recent summer event. But um, I'll, I'll save that for the full family rankings for all of the servants in Caldea towards the end of the year. Because Mordred kind of did talk me into, or to give me the idea, and it's sort of running through my head, and I definitely want to do something like that. A full family ranking of all the servants in Caldea. He thinks we're a child, so, you know. But I I don't know how big Kentucky is, so that might be logical for him. Great, that's great news. That means we don't have to run around searching Kyo for him. Right? Yes, that's true. I feel as though we may be saying the same thing in different ways, but yes, this does mean we've achieved one of our goals, though without acting. Actually, that makes two, since we also managed to find a local willing to help us. And that just leaves... Investigating and repairing the singularity. Right. Much better spot now than when we were after right after our race shift. Indeed it does. Now we can finally begin the operation in earnest. There you go. That's the spirit. Okay, I'm actually going to look up Kentoki, see what his height is. Because that could... Because if he's like a... If he's a towering giant, that might explain it. Oh. Oh, master! So, hey, you there. The tiny pretty one. What's your deal? You're not just an ordinary kid, right? I'm sensing something powerful from you. 
You an Omiyoju, a sage, maybe some kind of Tengu. Ah. To you, he's a serious older brother. I'm... I think that Lancelot, Saberlot, might be sort of like an uncle figure to me. But again, I, I need to save those thoughts because I still have to... I need to think of all the possible categories to put literally everybody in. And there's going to be a lot of categories. <laughs> Not that I know if they even got those in your time. Hmm, was the tiny part really necessary? Oh well, I can roll with it. I can't deny that I look pretty young in this form. Anyway, I'm Leonardo da Vinci, friend of souls and an unparalleled genius. Yes, Columbus will be in the family rankings. Columbus will be in the family rankings. Damn, so you're an honest-to-goodness prodigy, huh? That's real impressive. I'm Sakata Kentoki, Genji Warrior. Nice to meet ya. And I'm Sherlock Holmes. It's a pleasure, Sakata Kentoki. Where? Um... I definitely think that he is going to be, like, either in the uncle or... Maybe in, like... A grand uncle sort of tier. Like I said, there's gonna be a lot of things. There's gonna be the basic brother, sister, um, cousin, parental, aunts, uncles, nephews, nieces, that kind of stuff. But I think I might branch off to like grand, like if for older than. I'm I'm not sure of all the categories I'm gonna make just yet. Oh, looks like we got yet another new guy here. And there's something about this one that reminds me of Lord Sene. Man, Keldea must be a hell of a place. It is. I mean, you know, she's still an unparalleled genius. So, I think that, um, cast her or not, she deserves it. Alright, here's the situation as we understand it. We believe that both Sol and Kato Danzo were explicitly invited to the city of Hienkyo in the year 1008. Invited by whom, you might ask? Limbo, naturally. Well, it is unfortunate surprise to learn that Mash Carolite and Fuma Kotaro were unable to accompany you on your race shift. Everything else has unfolded exactly just as we predicted. Okay, I'm actually looking at 190 CM2. Limbo has gone out of his way to create a new singularity, a black mark on human history. His targets are almost certainly useful for having obstructed having been an obstruction to his plans so many times. And Kato Danzo, with whom he has a history of sorts. So, Kentoki is about six foot tall. He's like almost a foot taller than me, so... And given how swole he is, I'm not surprised that he would see me as a child. I doubt his plan here is to achieve final victory. Rather, his goal is likely simply to be toying with you on his home ground. Nothing more. Now that he has cut you off from any aid, it seems focused on boxing you in on all sides. He has clearly forgone any pretense of strategy in favor of indulging his proclivities. Foul and seeped in death and pain as they are. And that is all there is to say. I suspected he may have helped someone helping him before you two race shifted there. But I am at this stage absolutely certain no such collaborator exists. Limbo is the one behind this, and he's acting entirely on his own. Yeah, Holm. Did Holmes get some dust? Is that what's going on? Did did Holmes, Did somebody get? Did somebody tell Holmes where my stash of void dust was? I'm saving that for my servants, Holmes, not you. I may not be back at 100% just yet, but for something this obvious, I assure you, I'm more than equal to the task. I mean, it doesn't get more obvious than a bad guy outright signing their work. I gotta tell you, I was not expecting to see a bunch of letters in the logs for Mash and Kodoro's failed ray shifts. Letters. That's right, the letters. D. O. U. M. A. N. Buffoo! Doman, yep. You protect Jack and any of the other child servants. You hurt them, you will annihilate any person that hurts them. Fair. Fair is fair is fair. Very subtle, Doman. 
Very subtle. So what, this guy put his name in as some kind of message? Indeed, that is clearly Doman telling us he is the one behind all this. If that's supposed to be some kind of joke, it ain't funny. So basically, whoever this guy is, Limbo or Lord of Shia Doman or whoever, he's outright daring you guys to come after him. <laughs> this guy's gotta be a real piece of work straight up sign his name like that. Indeed. That said, I still do not understand if Limbo's goal is to seek revenge on us. Then what is the point of this Imperial Holy Grail War ritual? An Imperial Holy Grail War? I've not heard that term before. Tell us everything you know. Really? So the only servants being summoned are casters? That's certainly a decision. It sounds like he's taking the Holy Grail, Holy Grail War concept of summoning heroic spirits and downsized it or something. But if he did it like that, then this Holy Grail War's capacity for granting wishes couldn't possibly be... Omnipotent? No, it certainly couldn't. Which means the part about the winner having a wish granted must be a lie. Margit is indeed back to his antics. The thing Sion said about black holes and stuff is pretty funny to you. Oh, is it because of all the PBS um, space time that you've been watching? I did manage to get through all the multiverse stuff, by the way, but I am getting close to the end of the stream, so I don't think um, now is the best time to discuss it. In which case, what if the Grail were restricted to a single function only? I think that could work. The idea of us using Heroic Spirit Souls as an incredible source of magical energy has been around since long before Holy Grail Wars were even a thing. If you just wanted to use them as a power source for a single goal, it wouldn't matter how unbalanced that source ended up being. I think, yeah, it could definitely work. Well, if our resident um, Uomo Universal says it could work, and I for one am inclined to believe her. Then if we assume that this Imperial Holy Grail War is designed with a single purpose in mind, the next question to ask would, would quite naturally be, what is this purpose? Personally, I suspect it is to transform the very world itself. Decision so sign your death warrant, invoke wrath. Let's say your aura will be similar to Mega Rayquaza. Mega Rayquaza is quite potent. It's about the falling in the black hole. Neither are related humans are not related and humans can't produce them. Yet! We cannot produce black holes yet. D do you mean? As in to change the world in whichever way the wisher desires. Is there any particular reason why? Oh, we have! I didn't realize we actually made black holes. Naturally. Think back to the events of Shimosa. A great ritual was held there that involved the deaths of countless human souls and several heroic spirits. And as a result, Shimosa became a pseudo-parallel world of sorts. A pseudo-lost belt, if you will. True. It was somewhat a pseudo-lost belt, wasn't it? And that's true. According to our records, Shimosa's own Riado Castle was functionally equivalent to a lost belt's tree of emptiness. You could even call it a pseudo-tree of emptiness. So may be Limbo's planning to use this Imperial Holy Grail War as a means to create something similar. So that he can make Kian Kyo into a Lost Belt. Hmm, but why would he want to do that? Hmm. Perhaps he wishes to have the Foreign God manifest in the Hian period. Could that be? Yeah, the Foreign God's already here, though. Precisely, now that the Foreign God has manifested in Olympus, they should have no further need of a vessel. Unless perhaps a spare. No, I cannot see any way a transcendent being of that magnitude re would require anything like a spare. Well, let's not forget, with nothing but caster souls in the mix, that's not that result's not exactly going to be balanced. Like I said before, it's no easy feat keeping the magical energy source for such a massive spell stable. Even if the ritual is designed for just a single purpose, any imbalance the heroic spirit souls used to power it would could cause the whole thing to implode. <laughs> hmm, there must be some kind of trick we're not seeing. Unless maybe the whole thing's just some kind of twisted prank. I wouldn't put it past him. Huh? Oh crap. We're losing our connection, Senpai. Perhaps Limbo finally noticed our connection, or perhaps he wants to cut us off before we realize something he'd rather not know. Regardless, so it is absolutely imperative you stop the ritual from being completed. If every heroic spirit materialized there is killed, the Enkyo could be subjected to a new pseudo tree of emptiness, just like what happened in Shimosa. And that would result in two concurrent and existential threats to proper human history, a singularity and a loss of all in one. That's just a possibility not for now, but not, not a certainty. But either way, you better watch your back out there. 
We'll continue trying to establish contact until we get through again. So please, keep your comms line open. I'll make it back safe and sound, Mashu, I promise. Sent Pi. And we're still going, oh gracious. Oh my. It seems I got a bit carried away. <laughs> really, Caldanes, you could at least try to secure your communications a little. As it is now, it only took a flick of my fingers to sever them entirely. Oh well, in any case. I think that detective explained quite enough of my plan. We do need to save some surprises for later, after all. Now then. Master of Chaldea, my beautiful marionette. Hmm, from this point onward, we'll be engaged in a contest of pure strength. Come, and let us compete to see which of us can slaughter the most innocents. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that kind of laughter is not good for your throat. And that is finally the section done. Good gracious. One quartz, one, three refined magatamas, and three pure prisms. Alright. So that is the end of section three. Section 4 is way too long, so I'm not going to be able to run that tonight. But I will be picking this up back up tomorrow. After I got... After I get back from class. Which should hopefully be before like 7. So that's why I'm not going to lay down a concrete time for tomorrow. But tomorrow will be the stream. There will be a stream of this. As will Wednesday. Not Thursday. But there will be one on Friday as well if I have not yet finished this. But that is for the future me's concern. Um, Crimson, real quick, if you are still here, I will end the stream on my friend... Nope, wrong thing. On my friend code, just so you can send me a request. And I will be happy to accept it. But yeah, so I'm going to start my sign off here. So I have been Soul Rack Dragon. I hope that you've enjoyed this stream slash episode of Fate's Grand Order. If you have, leave me some feedback in whichever way you so see fit. If you want to support me, be sure to drop a like, a comment, or a subscription. Any or every one of them things would indeed be very much appreciated. If you want to check out more of me, I've got Twitch and YouTube, same name, same games. There is plenty of content for you and do it for you to enjoy. But once again, thank you all so much for coming out. Hope you enjoyed. Have a fantastic evening, everybody. Bye bye. <laughs>